May. She has been warm and she has been wet. So we know what that means. Mushrooms are coming on. So my purpose today of getting out here is just to look and see what's popping. There's going to be more stuff popping a little bit later, but I'm going to get out there, try to find some good edibles. And if you keep foraging along with your girl, she's going to show you how to identify edible mushrooms and how to eat and create dishes with said edible mushrooms. So let's see what we can find today. We're in a mixed forest, mainly hardwood. It's, like I said, the end of May coming into June, so good stuff is coming. Let's go! Woo! Still cannot believe this. They're all over the place. And sometimes we'll get a little dried on the cop and they'll kind of turn a lighter shade, but they are still black trumpets. And I'm going to take them all home. Another shanty growing. You know that I said black trumpets like moss? Look at all this moss. It's a big old patch. Get over here. Come look. Come look. My goodness. These ain't just little trumpets. Them's, them's big daddy trumpets. I can't believe it is. Look, what a patch. When you pick them, just take those little dirty butts off to put in your bag. It's that time of year that mushrooms are just everywhere. But I just didn't expect to find these today. Hashtag blessed. Just above the black trumpets, we have another mushroom. And these are the first I've seen this season. These are Romeria or coral mushrooms. And I think you can see why they're called that. These kind of look like, they may not be crown tip, but the crown tip ones are gonna have more of the little things on the top that shoot up. But either way, Romeria, coral, super cool. Sometimes you gotta take these home and take your books to them and ID them. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do with these. To make sure I got what I'm looking for. So another cool, Summer mushroom, it's about summer, so. Woo! Walk a few steps without finding something. We have a little Amanita baby, bulbous at the base. Look at that. Summer is coming. Don't eat this, but it's cool. As if it couldn't get any better before I've taken about a hundred steps up this trail. I'm reminded of what's on the way. Look at these little baby chanterelles already. It's the end of May, but we've had warm weather, lots of rain, and these little baby chanterelles in the moss. Obviously, 
not gonna pick these puppies. I'm gonna let them grow. Somebody else might get to them before me, but that's that's fine. Be silly to pick this, but they're coming. They're on the way. <laughs> It's also that time of year where y'all are going to see me profusely sweating everywhere I go. I got my handy dandy sweat rag and my water. Stay hydrated. One thing about chanterelles, whether we're talking golden chanterelles or these black trumpets, moss and beach are your friend. Look! Beautiful, guys. And they're just all through this moss around the bottom of this beech tree. Nice little cluster. And there's more on this side too. Not as big, but still got some. What a great day. This here is a platter full of mushrooms. I don't know why they call them that. Just kidding. They're huge. And usually they like to grow together. So here we go. Here we go. Pretty guys. Don't forget your spider stick. Keeps the spider webs off of you. This stuff here and here and here that look like creepy pine cones growing out of the ground is bear corn and this stuff is another medicinal plant a lot of people think that this is a mushroom it is not it's a parasitic plant around hardwoods and these are cool because the native americans used to use these for menstrual cramps menopause just all kinds of female lady issues but some people will eat these i don't advise it because they taste like dirt you can extract them to get their medicinal good goods out of them. So another cool plant to know. And I see a mushroom. Friars. Ah. Ooh. It's a rustler. Ain't she pretty? Black oak is plum loaded with little Rishi right now of all ages. So these little fingers, you see they're coming up out of the ground. That's baby Rishi. This right here, that's Papa Rishi. He's past his prime. These guys are tough. You can see how old and hard they are. And then there's a few older ones here, but here's some new growth. Here's like middle age Rishi, probably like in his 40s or something, kind of getting getting broke down, starting not to be in his prime babies. Look at all these little guys up through here. Look at that one. That one's awesome. Right there. And they just keep going all the way up through there. And these mushrooms are some of the best mushrooms on the planet. They are super, super medicinal. Some people call them the mushroom of immortality because all the health benefits are like through the freaking roof. So I take these and I make tincture with them. You can put them in your drinks or tea or whatever, and you can use them that way. But I'm gonna leave these because they're gonna get bigger. And hopefully nobody takes them out from underneath me, but that is a score and a half sun. These guys, or what you call wood ear and it is everywhere and these you couldn't ask for a more perfect specimen you're gonna find these growing on fallen dead trees like this and they are just loaded and they are edible despite the weirdness they're called wood ear because they grow on wood 
and they look like a deer. But they're all the way down through there. There's a huge patch. There's some on this one behind me. Look at that, like a rosette of wood ear. And then back there, there's more fallen trees that has more on it. And I think I see some oyster mushrooms over there too. So getting a haul today. I originally was just looking at these wood ear here, but I thought I smelled an oyster. There's some oyster mushrooms that are on a dead ash. These are like freaking primo edible baby. Look at that cluster. They have bugs in them, but that's okay because I'm going to wash them off and get all those bugs out. And we're going to eat them. So look for dead ash. They love it. I ain't going to have room in my sack. An easy way to ID oysters is they have what's called decurrent gills. That means that the gills actually run down the stem. A lot of mushrooms you'll see that the gills kind of stop where the stem or the stalk starts, but this one, they run up. They also have a very distinct smell. I can't tell you what that smell is, but once you start finding mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, you will know what I'm talking about. back at home with the bounty. What I've done here is I've just laid out on a paper plate some of the oysters, the wood ear, the black trumpets, and our little reishi that we got. A lot of times when you come home from a day full of mushroom hunting, you ain't always gonna feel like preparing these babies fresh and putting them in a dish after you've been out all day sweating. You gotta come home, pull ticks off yourself, all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can preserve these. And then here in the next few days, when I am not running around like a chicken with my head cut off, I'm going to show you a dish to make out of these. First, you got to know how to clean your mushrooms. A lot of times people are discouraged by this part. So I'm going to show you how to just wash these in some water. Depending on the mushroom, I kind of have different methods of how I'm going to wash them. So let's start with these oyster mushrooms. You can see that they've got some grit in there. They've got like some leaves and sticks and just a lot of little funky looking things on there. You might think that it doesn't look good, but this is an actually perfectly fine oyster. You're going to cut out any bad parts that you see. You see that these edges have kind of started to brown a little bit. You can just cut those off and you can still use this thing. You can usually give a mushroom a sniff test. If it smells bad, it's probably bad. This smells great. It smells like a mushroom. Our black trumpets here, I'm going to first start by snipping any dirty ends off that I find. These are our wood ear. These are actually super easy to clean. I'll show you how to do that. Then this reishi, I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of a wrench and soak and show you how I'm going to keep that. Let's get started. I'm going to take some scissors and just trim off any weird spots I see. Those little brown edges, just give it a little snip sip, you'll be fine. And when they're big like this, this is a big pretty color, kind of break it in half. And then two, when you do that, if there's any dirt and debris that's, or even bugs, hanging out in the stem, you can get that in. Give it a slosh. Lay it on our towel. I'm just gonna keep doing that until we're satisfied. If you get a little bit of grit in your dish, I always say God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. Washed, drying, I'm gonna show you how to preserve two ways. We're gonna do a saute with the black trumpets and the oysters. And we're gonna dehydrate the wood ear and the reef. Allow me to prepare my tools and we'll get going. For the wood ear, I'm getting out 
my handy dandy dehydrator. I got this at Walmart for like, I think it was like $35. Sometimes you'll see people with these big fancy schmancy multiple level heat setting multi tray crazy dehydrators. It ain't necessary. This little Walmart job will do the trick. I've used this forever and ever and ever and ever. It doesn't have a heat setting, it doesn't have a timer, and I'm doing just fine. Go ahead and put on the lid. Make sure that it is tight, no air getting through. And we're gonna just do this for a few hours and keep checking on it every hour or so. Whittier dries pretty quick and Rishi might take a little bit longer, but when it is like crispy cracker dry is when we're gonna be pulling them out. And I'm going to be adding them to my mushroom pantry. You can see here. We'll be going in some jars. Now, let's saute the oysters and the trumpets. Breaking out the fine china, boys. We're going to get us a paper plate. I'm going to get a cutting board and a knife. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these oyster mushrooms into little strips. Just cutting down like this. You don't have to be super uniform if you are a perfectionist and care about knife cuts. You just go ahead and you take your time. But I don't foresee Gordon Ramsay coming to my house and telling me my knife cuts aren't uniform. I'm just feeding friends and family and I ain't never got no complaint about um, different size mushrooms in their dish. They're just happy to have it. Now, I'm actually going to saute my trumpets and my oysters together because I have a mixed wild mushroom dish in mind for all of the mushrooms that I got today, which I, like I said, I'll show you this here in a few days which it won't seem like a few days to you because you're watching a TV show, so immediately after this segment, you're gonna see the next segment where I'm making it. So you don't even have to wait for it. The power of television. Oysters are chopped. Trumpets, I don't even worry about cutting them. When you're sauteing them, they're gonna cook down anyway. And I feel like it's just a unnecessary step. Like, if you have a big one like this, if you want to pull it apart, you can. All right, skillet, medium high heat. There ain't nothing in it. No butter, no oil, no grease, nothing. Why is that, Whitney? The reason is when you have freshly washed wild mushrooms, such as these, you wanna drop them into a dry, hot pan. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna release all their juices. So any retained water from us washing them earlier is going to come out, but then also their natural moisture and juices are gonna come out. Then these wild boys just suck that right back up. Once it becomes dry, you're gonna add fat. So butter, oil, bacon grease, whatever you want, but you do have to saute these in fat for it to preserve properly for our purposes. Our purposes are going to be to freeze. We're going to freeze these bad boys and I promise you that you can't even tell that these were previously frozen when you cook them for people. I will usually just do salt and pepper with this because sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm going to be using them for in the future. So salt and pepper you're typically going to add that to any dish, so you can't go wrong. That's a safe thing to be putting in here. But I do know what I'm going to do with these, but I'm still just going to do salt and pepper on them today. And then add the rest of my seasonings later. Once all that juice has been reabsorbed by your mushrooms, we're adding butter. Butter makes everything better. This won't take long after you hit this part. You're in the home stretch. We're just gonna leave it on medium high heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. 
a little bit of salt. We're gonna saute this just until your mushrooms are starting to get a little brown on the edges. You don't wanna take it too far because you're gonna be recooking this. We're sauteing in the fat to preserve for a later dish. If you cook the hell out of your mushrooms now, they'll be hammered by the time that you're gonna be using them for the next thing. I'm just gonna put them in a plate and let them cool. Now, I'm gonna get a freezer bag. Once these have cooled, and I'm gonna add those to the freezer bag. Then you're done. Ready to go for the next meal. Let's let them cool. Catch you back here. The way I like to do it is I get two bags. I'm gonna double bag this. This is gonna prevent any freezer burn that could happen if it were just in a single bag. So I've got kind of like a little flimsier bag here. And I use paper plates so often that I've developed the taco method of dumping them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in here in the bag. All right, so I'm gonna kind of roll it to get any air out of there. So that was the taco method, this is the burrito method. Make sure you get your bag sealed. Then we're going to this bag. This is the this is a quart freezer bag. I keep a bajillion of these for frozen mushrooms. And again, squeeze all the air out that you can. Seal it. So putting the day's date on here. 29 22 and then I've got oyster and black trumpets this can go right into the freezer and it can stay in your freezer for a year or longer when we want to reuse it all we got to do is throw it in a pan warm it up and again it is just like a fresh freaking mushroom this is my favorite way to preserve it if you want to have it be as close to fresh mushrooms as possible. In she goes. You can see here I've got other, here's some chanterelles that I got from last summer. I'll be making something with that soon. But magically it's going to be a few days later and we're going to make stuff with those. Boom! now several days later you remember those mushrooms that we froze time to put them to use mama's had a hard day at work that's me I'm mama and I got a hankering for some wild mushroom toast and that is what we're going to turn our mushies into today it's super simple super tasty it's got cheese bread garlic shallots all the good stuff I'm gonna show you how to make it Let's get started. Now I have like zero chill when it comes to mushrooms and the mushrooms that I like to include in my dishes. So we will be using the oysters and the black trumpets that we found that we froze, but I'm also gonna be adding some stuff from my mushroom archives. So that's what I call all the stuff in my freezer. I've got some more oysters to add. You can see these are from December of last year. So I found these actually two days after Christmas. Did the same thing with these, sauteed them butter and froze them. And then another one that I'm gonna be adding is lion's mane. It's this crazy white mushroom that has like all these little dangly spines that grows on trees. And I did the same thing with it. Butter, saute, froze. I'm gonna be mixing these all together as a topping for the mushroom toast. I like my dishes mushroom heavy. So we're definitely making mushroom heavy. You don't have to use like a bajillion different mushrooms. That's just who I am and I'm a maniac. Speaking of which, I have chicken of the woods that are just in my sink right now. We'll be doing a saute with those a little bit later. Um, not on camera, that's just 
a different episode. Just watch and you'll figure it out. I have prepped up some stuff here. Um, what we're going to be including in the wild mushroom toast today is shallot, garlic, spinach, some shredded cheddar, and I've got some herbed goat cheese. This is garlic herb goat cheese. I'm going to be using some bacon grease. I've got four pieces of bread that I'm going to be toasting. This is just sourdough bread. I recommend something that's a little bit sturdier. You can use like just regular white bread, but you want a good sturdy base. So I'm going sourdough today. You could use whatever you want. First things first, medium high heat, big thick skillet. I got a wooden spoon that I'm going to be using to stir all this stuff. Get you a big old glob of bacon grease. You could use butter. You could use oil, olive oil. Whatever tickles are fancy, but the Appalachian mama and me had to get my mason jar out full of bacon grease. We're gonna let that melt down some. I'm gonna go ahead and stick my toast in the oven. I've got it set on 375 and I'm just gonna keep an eye on it throughout the cooking. And I've already prepped quite a few things here. I'm gonna be uh, chopping up a couple things. For the garlic, I'm gonna go about four cloves. I've already minced some. You're gonna smash it, take your blouse off, get that skin off of there, and cut out any bad parts. I call the ends are little dirty butts. Take those off, mince. Just a nice dice for them. Then with the shallot, I've already took her blouse off. I'm just gonna do thin little rings like this. We throw them in the skillet to cook these up. They're gonna kind of fall apart so you don't have to worry about taking all these rings apart and separating them. What I typically like to do with my frozen mushrooms if I'm gonna use them is to let them set out just a little bit before I start going. <clears throat> just gives a little bit of time to thaw somewhat. You can actually just throw them in completely frozen if you wanted to. So all the stuff that's frozen around it is actually butter. So it's just going to be amazing. I'm dumping in those oysters. My grease is getting nice and hot. You'll hear that sizzle. And then I'm going to dump in this crazy lion's mane. It looks almost like spaghetti noodles in here. So I'm just going to add all that. It's going to be so many mushrooms. You ain't never going to hear me complain about that. Then we have our black trumpets and oysters. But y'all were with me when I found. Dump in. Meemaw's already sweating. You'll come to learn. I sweat a lot when I'm hiking and I sweat a lot when I'm cooking. Spice that I l -l 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 love is truffle zest. I add this to this, the mushroom seasoning that I make. And I mean, it is the most pungent stuff on planet earth, but it is so good. It's just like a really intense umami mushroom flavor. A little, little bit goes a long way. So that much right there is going to give so much mushroomy flavor. And we're already working with a big giant pan of mushrooms, so you don't want to overload it. When Leonard Skinner wrote that smell, they were talking about this, this smell. God. Well, it doesn't smell like death all around you. This gives me life. Once you start seeing that, we're gonna wilt some spinach straight into it. Now, when you cook spinach, it cooks down so small, so it might look like I'm putting a metric butt ton of spinach in here. But once you see it cook down, you'll see why. I'm just putting probably like, three good hands, handfuls of 
spinach into here. Now with wild mushrooms, you want to make sure that you cook them thoroughly. I always say at least a good 10 minutes in a pan. These have been previously cooked somewhat, so we may go a little bit shy 10 minutes today and that's okay. And always start small when you're trying a new wild mushroom that way. If you do have any sort of reaction to it, if you just take a little piece of it, you ain't gonna get sick. But all the mushrooms that I'm using here today are not known to cause any sort of reactions. And I sure don't have any problem eating it. And check the toast. Depending on your oven, which mine is this way, you may have to flip and adjust. Like the back side of my oven's way hotter than the front side. Mmm, <laughs> this smells amazing. You're probably like, Whitney, how are you gonna put all these mushrooms on just four pieces of toast? Watch me. I realize I do that all the time, hit the spoon if it gets up, make a lot of noise. There it goes. I'm like the Tasmanian devil in the kitchen. If you can't tell, I just like to clean as I go and get stuff out of the way. I'm going to add a little bit of butter just right to the middle of this hot pan with the mushrooms and the good, good stuff in it. And that's just going to give it a nice little finish off to finish the saute. Toast is out. This is about where I like it. Nice little golden brown. And I'm using this herb to goat cheese. It's garlic and herb and it is the bomb.com. And we're just going to spread it on our toast like you would butter. So get a nice little pad of it. Just go ahead and spread it on there where your toast is warm. It's going to make it easier to get that on there. I've used ricotta in this before and just smeared straight up ricotta on the toast. And it's definitely a more mild flavor than goat cheese. If you like stanky cheese that like smells like feet, you're gonna love this. I'm just kidding, it doesn't smell like feet, but it is a strong cheese. Pairs well with everything that we're putting in the dish today for sure. So I'm gonna cheese these toasts up. I like a lot of it. So I'll meet you back here in five. Got our toast all cheesed up. We've got this gorgeous Freaking wild mushrooms, spinach, bacon grease, shallot, garlic, heaven, concoction, and a skillet. It just feels so good. I'm gonna get me a big old spoon and we're gonna top our toasties. I like to just take my hands and transfer it to our toast. And on top she goes. That is so sexy that there should be an R rating on this episode. So we're piling them high, sissy, piling them high. You can do less than this if you are a sensible person. I'm not. So let's just go to town here. Oh my gosh. That's the first time that I taste it. I have to taste it now. And then we are going to add this cheese right to the tippy top of this mountain of wild foraged ridiculousness. I'm going to go ahead and switch my oven. I've left the heat going at 375, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that baby to broil because we're just wanting to kind of melt the tops here. The heat from the mushrooms will kind of carry through and let it go ahead and melt a little bit, but I think that 
melted cheese, like completely melted cheese on top is the way to go. Don't waste, add all the cheese. Your pan's still gonna be hot. Get your oven mitt. Mine has mushrooms on it, go figure. Let's just add it back into the oven and watch it until she's nice and melty on top. Make sure you're keeping watch. That can run away from you. Oh, she melting. She is melting. The time has come. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Is that not one of the prettiest dang things you've ever seen? Look at those lines made. Just beautiful and crisp on the bottom. Oh my God. All right. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I think I'm gonna take this plate when we eat because it's got more mushrooms on it. I'm gonna let it cool. And then we're gonna have to do a taste test. I mean, come on. Moment of truth. You're gonna learn something about me. You know that it's really good if it makes me dance. When I eat something and I uncontrollably just like can't stop moving my body, you know it's good. So let's see if this toast can make me boogie. I'm gonna try to get me a good bite with all those different things. Here's a good bite with spinach, different mushrooms, and some cheese on it. So let's let's hit it. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, those different layers. When you get that goat cheese too and that crunchy bread, holy crap. Okay. Yep. Passes the taste test. I can't wait to eat that. If y'all keep watching me, I'm gonna take you along, show you how to find mushrooms show you how to make insanely amazing dishes like this one. 10 out of 10. Y'all gotta try this. Anywho, keep watching you girl. Happy forging.